Uh, here we go. We're back. It must be a Monday night. Looking forward to this one. Got a, uh, a bit to uh, go over. We've got a few on, so I'll go through those in a minute. We've got, um, got as I said, a heap to cover tonight. Um, looking forward to all of your questions. Make sure that you get your questions in. Uh, got to go through the prizes tonight. Obviously, everyone's on for the prizes. The postcode prize tonight. Uh, this is a new one, so I've got a couple of these to give away over the next couple of weeks. So tonight, the postcode prize is uh, donated by, uh, I don't know if you'll see that there, Lawson Real Estate. Dave Lawson gave me these uh, last weekend while I was out fishing with him. They're actually a booster pack for your phone. So it's got a little USB cord and charger in there. So you charge these up and, uh, yeah, you'll never run out of power in your phone. So they're really cool. Thanks, Dave, for those. So that's your postcode. All you've got to do is whack your postcode in. As the people that have followed the show before will know that Harry is inside watching the show. He picks one of those postcodes out uh, at random and you will win the prize pack. So uh, we've still got some uh, Teams Fishing Australia shirts. You'll see it on the wall there. So... We've got a Teens Fishing Australia shirt. Obviously, uh, Galvo's got some in different sizes. So there is a shirt, a uh, stubby cooler, and, and a brag mat here as well. These are really cool brag mats with all the sponsors on it as well. So it's cod size, goes up to a metre 25. So you should be able to fit most of your fish onto that. So that's going to be given away at random to a question tonight. So make sure you Put your questions in as well. So postcode, as I said, Dave Lawson's put the uh, battery pack in there. Galvo's given us uh, another prize pack to give away. Uh, that's for your questions tonight. And, of course, Harry's wheel later on in the show will be one of the sponsored products when Harry spins it up. So that's really cool. Uh, Got to give a, give a bit of a shout-out to the uh, Allocraft Brand Ambassadors program that we've got running. If you haven't seen it, on all of our socials, which is Corey's Dam Fishing. Um, you've got the Bluefin Fishing Team, uh, Bluefin Boats, Allocraft Boats. Uh, we're basically running the apprenticeship program again. So it's the Brand Ambassadors Apprenticeship Program. So I've done a little bit video up for you guys and girls to make sure that you, you might know someone that wants to enter this, all right? It is a great program uh, Bill won the boat last year. He's uh, just about to go 12 months into his program and going great guns, sitting eighth. Oh, well, I can't say I had anything to do with that. Bill's a naturally gifted angler, but having the boat, um, you know, in his first year has been just great for him to uh, get out there and compete. He was going to co-boat this year, so um, he's pulled it out of the bag, sitting eighth AOY. Uh, more than likely can push up into the top five with a good result at Somerset in about a month's time. So looking forward to see how Bill goes with that. But we are running that program again, but this time we are running it as a juniors program. When we say junior, we probably should uh, label it as a, um, well, what would we call it, a uh, youth program. So it's under 21s, between 16 and 21. So if you're between the ages or know somebody that is between the ages of 16 and 21 that would like to get a nice little boat uh, for two years and a bit of mentorship, not just through me, but with the whole Bluefin fishing team. Search Facebook here. We've got the little uh, little thing here. What you do, just put into your search program and type in Allocraft Brand Ambassadors Apprenticeship Program. Ask to join that program there and you will obviously be accepted and you'll see all the terms and conditions going on there but just watch all our socials more media will be coming out on that so if you're looking to get uh get yourself into a nice little boat you're between the age of 16 and 21 um what a great little deal get your parents involved maybe your dad or mum and they can take you out fishing in your boat so uh cool little prize we've got going there looking forward to uh Doing the uh, announcement of that later on, but uh, yeah, follow that and have a look and see what's happening with that one. So that's the Allocraft Brand Ambassadors uh, Youth Apprenticeship or Junior Apprenticeship. So uh, looking forward to getting some entries into that one. Look, we've got a heap of people on. Let's see who we got. Alion, G'day, Scott, Bo, Tony, Glenn, Sue, Jason, Brian. Oh, we've got heaps on. Aaron, Luke. 
Paul, I think I'm getting through everyone. Dave, Tim, Peter, Neil, Brett, Shane, Robin, and Chris, Christina. Awesome. So we've got heaps of people on, heaps of people watching. I do have a guest tonight that, uh, you know, a lot of people who have seen his work and not actually uh, known it's come from Lane. So Lane Furling, a good mate of mine from my days up at Lake Boon Duma and Bjorki Peterson, um, used to fish the teams events and we used to have a bit of fun with that at uh, or for the Bass Nation teams events. And Lane got himself into the media side of things. He does it on the side from his day job. It's called Mad Lane Media. Uh, you should look him up and give him a like on Facebook and um, all that sort of stuff. But you would have seen some videos go out on YouTube, some really top quality stuff. Uh, I, I know he's done some work with GT Buster uh, and Maddie Langford, all the Maddie Langford stuff done through Lane, which is uh, which was hugely popular last year. So we got Lane down to film the Teens Fishing uh, series that we did at Mawala and he filmed and edited all those great videos up that I've been playing over the last three weeks. So I thought it'd only be uh, fitting that we got Lane on to say thanks for all his stuff. But Lane's a bit of a guru on all your social medias, uh, any of your camera questions um, and yeah, any of your Southeast Queensland fishing questions as well. I can answer any other questions you've got in there. Just make sure you keep the questions coming. All right, I better get him on and say good day, and then we might uh, jump out to some questions. So don't forget, you've got to basically ask a question to go in the prize and win one of the prizes. So get them in there and don't forget your postcodes either. So I'm having huge mouse problems here tonight. All right, let's make sure that I've unmuted microphones. It's been a while since I've got this doing. G'day, Mr Lane. How are you? Hey, mate. Good, good. Good, good. Thanks for having me. No, no. Look, I do have to say the boys have uh, the boys are already on commenting as well, um, saying thanks for all your work. Uh, you know, you, you're doing some pretty cool stuff out there in the social media space. You, you've you've found a little niche there of of fishing uh, videography, I suppose, and um, using the cameras. It's just um, it's really cool what you've been able to do. What made you get into that? I guess uh, you know I, I started I started out. Like like what a lot of people are doing, and you know, just just uh, filming you know each each fishing adventure, so to speak. Um, yeah, I started out with, as everyone does, just a GoPro, uh, that type of stuff, and and really yeah, kind of, kind of just filmed and edited, yeah, all, all your fishing adventures, and then kind of through through social media and that type of stuff, uh, saw you know what a lot of lot of guys are doing in the states, and with obviously um, Carl being in the states, following him. He had, he had a couple of blokes filming uh, he, with him uh, constantly and having an eye, I guess, as a fisherman to, to know what looks good, uh, I kind of, you know, kept thinking, you know, kept to, you know, try, try to instill what they did on their videos with, with what I was doing. Um, and then, mate, literally just through that, just picked up, a, went from a GoPro to a, a mirrorless and now into a, um, you know, a, a pretty good functional setup. Um, and yeah, just haven't looked back. It's been um, it's been pretty cool the last five years, um, and yeah, here we are. <laughs> and it's taken you some pretty cool places. I mean, a lot of people don't realise, you know, there there isn't a lot of people out there doing it in the fishing world. We're all trying, you know. I see a comment. I can't remember. Uh, Scotty Gullick said up there, uh, "Did Harry film my last video from the tree?" Well, it was too windy for us to to take some video footage and take the drone out. So Harry actually got on one of the docks and and filmed it for me. He's a great little little helper out in the boat. But uh, you've been able to go to some pretty magic places and and do some filming. Um, tell us one of the best places you've been to to film. Yeah, I get. I guess uh, yeah, it's something I've been very fortunate of, and you know, go to a lot of places and uh, be on a lot of boats. Uh, I think the biggest thing that I I say to a lot of people. I get to be on a lot of boats uh, that I wouldn't normally get to be on and get get to you know film and talk to and you know become mates with uh, a lot of people I never thought I would to I would be able to do five years ago. Um, probably the best uh, the best destination but that I have been to is Cape York uh, when I went up there with Benny Jones or GT Buster. Um, I fil filmed his Cape series. Uh, that that Cape York region is just yeah out of this world. Um, yeah, and the, pl the places we went to up there uh yeah it's fishing mecca that's for sure 
I mean, I was I was in awe when I first got to watch those videos and think how lucky you were to get up there. So for anyone that is out there looking for YouTube content that is really, really cool, uh, GT Buster, all these videos, uh, they're just so down to earth in, in the sense of how he is. Um, he, he basically talks as if he would in person, doesn't he? Yeah, literally. Yeah, what you see is what you get with Benny, and I think that's what, what everyone loves and what so well. Um, yeah, no, he's, he's a top bloke. And, uh, yeah, top end, you've done Cape York. You did all the Matty stuff last year at Caney. You got to chase Matty around at the Oz Open for the ABT last year and got all that that, that great content. Um, and then, you know, you, you got to, lucky enough, borders were open. You got to fly down and um, do the Moela job with us. I mean, yep. it, it's just, um, you know, if people are out there, how do they, how do they get a hold of you if they want to um, use you for your... For your skills, mate. Yeah, so I, um, you know, yeah, as you said uh, earlier, Mad Lane Media is our is our production uh, media company. Um, but yeah, so yeah, find us on that on Facebook or Instagram or um, yeah, me personally. Um, and yeah, we can easily get something done for anyone. That's for sure. It's a it's a it's a great great uh, great business and great uh, you know industry to be in. Um, and yeah, I, I love creating cool content um, and seeing seeing you know uh, you know your clients. Uh, you know, faces when you, you, you deliver them, um, you know, a good production quality, uh, you know, story. It's pretty cool. It's very cool. Right. Yeah, it's insane. I, I mean, doing what I do and I do a lot of videos and I, I try and edit them up and I, I'm, a, I'm a bit of an old hack, you know, I'm from pre-computer era. So for, for me, Facebook's a big challenge and, um, yep. you know, I have a go and I have a crack at it. But um, for for you younger guys that are that are brought up through the through the whole thing, I mean, you um, some of that content that you do on those, how do you get yourself into that mode where it's not just you know the fish capture? Everyone yeah. that's out there filming about fishing and doing fishing stuff, all they want to do is get that one fish on film and they're trying to get that but you can edit these this stuff together to make it look real we had probably 25 30 fish that we caught on camera which is totally <laughs> unusual for my whaler yeah. but you are able to put, put that into an interactive uh three to six minute video that that just come up mind-blowing yeah i guess um i guess the way i film you know it um it, sometimes it looks like you, you know so to speak shooting from the hip um, but with, with everything that I do and, um, you know, I kind of, I, I you know, give a lot to, uh, Mick Guthrie from cast, um, and Benny who, uh, have taught me a lot, taught me, taught me everything that I, you know, know from filming. And yeah, as they say too, it looks like you're shooting from the hip, but you're, you know, for example, my whaler on the flight down, I'm constantly thinking about shots to get and a, a storyline and you're just trying to create a story in your head trying to film it and then you can go and put it put it into post-production and obviously make the video so um yeah a lot of the times it does look like you're shooting from the hip uh but yeah you're you're constantly you're thinking about a shot you're then trying to yeah replicate it and then you know that you're going to be able to use that section um yeah in a later date uh, in a certain part of that video yep do you um when you're looking for that content so to speak do you you know Nobody stages fishing stuff anymore. I know in the early days, you know, Channel 7, Channel 9, I yeah. won't mention people, but there was a fair bit of stage stuff going on. It, yeah. You know, people see through that these days, but do you think your background, you, you know, you're quite an accomplished fisherman. You, you've got a very uh, good sporting background as well. Do you think that's helped you with being able to pick what content is good to put out? Yeah, I, I, I guess so. And, um, and just, I guess, time... Time learning and time being a sponge and listening to to other uh, people that are you know much higher than me in the profession. Uh, yeah, I, I think that plays a big part to that. That's for sure. I, I think um, yeah, you know, yeah. I guess having a fishing background and you know, if I'm filming fishing content, so to speak, um, as I said at the start, you know, I kind of ha had an idea from the start what what looks good and as a fisherman, what you what you like to see. So uh, yeah, those that type of B-roll story making stuff is uh, is really easy to come by, simply because yeah, you know what you know what that that audience audience likes to start with. Yeah, for sure. I, I just got a question. I'm going to leave it and see if it comes up in the questions. I'm just writing it down. Yeah. Uh, because if it doesn't come up, I'll ask it later on. 
We've got a few questions coming in, so we'll uh, we'll get to them because uh, they've been nice enough to put them in. Paul wants to know um, how long it would take you to um, a five minute video. How long would it take you to edit that through from start to finish? Yeah, um, oh, how long is a piece of string? Is it is the is the is the right answer? But to put it to put it in context, kind of a good example is the videos we did with you guys and the Bluefin team. So. Uh, you're looking at, mate, I can sometimes get stuff done in, in an hour, like a five minute, five minute clip. If I'm, yeah, if, you, if you're really knuckling down, um, sometimes it can take three, three or four hours. I, I, the hardest, hands down, and anyone in editing, you know, video, uh, videography will tell you, hardest thing is the, the music to start, knowing, knowing what music to put with, knowing that like storyline. Um, and then you, I just, I call them run throughs. So you do run throughs. So you're, You'll get your base layer with your with your music, with your you know your little bit of a storyline. Put your uh, put all your videos in sequence that you want. So that's one run through. Next run through is all your transitions, um, and you get them all all nice and hitting the beats of the music, hitting the you know, swipe up, slide down, so all that type of type of jazz. Next run through is is color. Um, so then you can put all your your post post color um, additions on, um, and then your final run through. So yeah, I can do. Hell, five, five to six run throughs, like complete run throughs, and uh, by the end of it, you know, you know it's coming. You, you, you know that video back to front because you've you've watched it so many times, listened to the music so many times, and you get really picky. Um, but yeah, at the same time as I say that, you know, you can punch stuff out in an hour. Um, it's always good to come back, uh, and that's why I, you know, once again, talk about the what we did down at Moala. Flick it to you, get your feedback, and then by the time I get it back too, I've, I'm making you know minor tweaks. That um, someone with an eye can, you know, makes makes all the difference. That's for sure. Yeah. Look, I, and I have to say, like your your first copy that you sent to us um, is still better than my final edit. Um, but it, you know, I'm like, wow, this is really cool. And you go, oh, I've still got a few touch ups to do and stuff like that. Yeah. What um, I'll, I'll wait because it might come up in the in the programs and stuff that you use. Paul's got another one here. Uh, which is which is a great one to um, get in. I've I've just replaced my computer, but I learned something off you at my whaler. And he wants to know: Is there any benefit for filming in 4K, or is 1080p enough? Yeah. So uh, any anything that you watch that I film on my big camera is 1080. Um, so reasoning behind that is I'm not I'm not worried about um, you know quality as such. Uh, when you're talking like the actual video, I'm chasing what's called frame rates. So um, I guess there, there's two 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 parts to, to filming. There's yeah, obviously your quality, so that's your 4K 1080, and then there's your frame rate. So um, frame rates is gives you the ability to film and then uh, in post production cut it cut it down so it can be slow mo and be smooth. So so essentially your eyes your eyes are at so to speak 30 30 frames per second. That's what we are, us as humans function at. Yeah. Um, but anything less than thirty frames, um, you, you'll see that it can be like real, real glitchy, real, yep. real sh shuddery. So to make it, you know, smooth, um, you, you try and film everything over thirty frames. Uh, ideally, um, with, with obviously top line cameras and stuff, the the boys film in uh, like one hundred and twenty frames. So essentially, divide it by four. You cut it. You can time, slow that down four times, and it'll still be very smooth. Um, so I film in 1080, 60 frames, um, which is the capacity of my camera, and um, and then so I can half half stuff down. So if you're getting like a really atmosy shot of, um, you know, bait cast rod throwing a big swim bait out, uh, water coming off the reel, um, you can halve that essentially, and it'll still be smooth as, um, and you're getting a, a slow mo shot. So I guess I guess to your question, Paul, there, there is benefits 100%. You're going to have a clearer a clearer image. Um, but you have to have obviously everything in 4K. You can't have um, 4K here and then a 1080p. When you export it, it'll be 1080p. But yeah, a lot of guys do film just 1080. It's HD. Um, it's classed as HD, and a, a lot of people's TVs, um, phones to some degree, um, only show 1080 as well. So yeah, I uh, I think it will change in probably the next two two three years. Everything will be 4K. Um, but for now, yeah, 1080 is very suffice. 
Yeah, and tell me, I might be wrong, but uh, I was told a long time ago that, you know, when, when we started getting up to those 4Ks, I know that they're talking 6Ks and yeah. and bigger now, but that's cinematography stuff. So as you said, when, you, when you're when dulling it down, if you're just putting it onto YouTube or yeah. you're just putting it onto your Facebook, you don't need that that big frame either. No. Nah. Uh, you also don't need as big a frigging computer to try and edit it because yes, most exactly. computers will will crash when you're trying to edit 4K. I mean, um, some of them will dull it down and bring it back up if you've got really yeah. good editing programs. Yeah. But if you're just starting out, you know, um, if you're recording 4K, you'll have all sorts of trouble trying to edit in it, won't you? Yeah, and um, and space on your on your SD card too is massively. So, yeah, you're yeah. doubling your quality or, yeah, so to speak, doubling your quality, so you're doubling your, um, yeah, how much space you take as well. Yeah, because uh, if anyone wants to see the difference, uh, I think it was in video uh, two of the series that you did for us when I had the camera pole on the back with the Garmin sitting on the back to yep. get a full day's fishing on that uh, SD card without changing it, I needed to run it at 720p. Yep. So your 1080 footage to my 720p was a big difference. It almost looked cloudy, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, and um, and yeah, there, there's obviously some yeah limitations there, and uh, yeah, some challenges you get along. But yeah, no, that's uh, that's a good example, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, Sue wants to know, uh, do you use drones with your work? Obviously, I know the question, but Sue Sue doesn't. So yeah, absolutely. Um, no, they're a, they're a great tool to use. Uh, yeah, they're uh, you know, almost a, a reinvention, and they definitely change the game when they hit the market and. Uh, they're still changing the game because they're just getting better and better. Um, I, I, I use DJI products, um, so I've currently got a DJI Mavic. Uh, but uh, as I said to you, uh, Kat, after after my whaler uh, and seeing what Connor had just in a, a little small package of a, a new DJI uh, DJI drone, um, yeah, it'll be upgrade time very soon for me, that's for sure. But um, they're a, they're a, they are a good investment. Um, and they don't float, I can tell you that much for free. So yeah. They, they, no. they sink pretty quick. For sure. Tip of the day would be take the um, – take the, they don't call it an ex uh, extended warranty, but they have got a DJI program. I think you pay $175 for the first year, and uh, then it's a replacement drone. If you lose it, it flies away. It goes into the drink. It doesn't matter. I know Morgo from ABT – I think he's on his about his sixth drone yeah. on that program. So uh, yeah. that's well worth the money, isn't it? Oh, worth its weight in gold, that's for sure. Yeah, I found that out the hard way. I've got the same drone as what you've got uh, with the older gimbal style on it, and yeah. I, I'm a bit uh, hard on my gear, and I was taking it off just from the dirt, and dirt got up into the gimbal and wrecked the, the gimbal. Yeah. They're very sensitive. Uh, I had to have it replaced. It cost me $600 yeah. to replace the camera and the gimbal. Uh, yeah. And when I looked at the footage that Connor got off his drone, uh, it was just, you know, the next level above, and that was the smaller, cheaper drone model. Yeah, unreal. Yeah, it's crazy what they're doing now in, um, in, in with those, yeah, those smaller drones, that's for sure. All right, uh, let's look through. I'm looking for some more. We've got some great questions coming in. Brandon wants to know, best advice for someone starting out filming their fishing? Fit, uh, film everything. That, if that's uh yeah that that that's uh the biggest biggest take out I think is um is whenever you go don't not have act or and then don't not have a camera on I think um the way the way you know you grow you grow and you see people grow in social media they either go two ways they either they educate or entertain um so if you, if you're really good at yeah you know speaking delivering um you know product review that type of stuff that that that's your your niche. Um, that's really good. Otherwise, if you can entertain, um, and I guess with fishing, the easiest way to entertain is don't miss that. Don't miss that. You know that fish of a lifetime, or that that awesome capture, that awesome miss. Um, you know where you drop the drop the fish right by the boat and have a tantrum. You know that type of entertainment um, is what is what everyone loves to see. So the the longer that camera is on, uh, the more you'll catch. That's for sure. There's a um, <laughs> there's a an unwritten uh, I guess folklore to say the old camera curse, and it's um, it's it, it is sometimes true. But when you do capture something pretty cool, like you know, out of this world on on the camera, it makes it so worth it. So worth it. Yeah, for sure. Like uh, you see 
some of these things that, that really, if, you, if you're getting out, you want to get a name for yourself. Obviously, you want people to, to watch what you're doing. And if you get that one one thing of the either and it's a, the best strike you can do, yeah. whether it's, you know, two cod mating or whatever, having that camera on all the time. I know um, Dean Sylvester um, runs that 360 camera all yeah. the time. So if he's casting out, he's got the strike and he's got the, you know, he just uses two two sides of it. He doesn't actually use it as a 360, but yeah. it, it gives him both angles as well. So, yeah. No, it's um, it's yeah, it's a, and I guess with you know technology too, you can have power packs on yourself, um, hard wire into your boat. Uh, you can have yeah constant power supply all day, and yeah, make sure those cameras don't don't turn off. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, because oh, I don't know how many times when before I had because I got mine on the pole on the back of the boat, it plugs directly into my battery. Yeah, so it stays charged all day. As I said, I, I've got the um, got it down to 720p to fit it all on the one card. Yeah, uh, but as camera technologies and and stuff gets better, um, you know, we'll get bigger cards, and I'll be able to crank yeah. that up. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for sure, great question, Brandon. That's an awesome. Now, as I said, we've got postcode prize to give away tonight. Harry's already chosen the postcode prize. Um, just making sure I got it right. It's two eight seven zero, and it's Mick Hayden. So Mick, you get the uh, the pack. What you need to do. Uh, sponsored by Lawson Real Estate. So they're really cool. They've got the, the different attachments in the end of them there and you'll never run out of charge. Obviously, this uh, battery pack, as we were talking about, can be plugged into your GoPro as well. Stuff like this will keep your GoPro battery going as well. So, Mick, uh, just to Corey Sam Fishing on my personal page, uh, can you make sure that you send me your address so I can post your prize out to you? I'll get that out of the way. And thanks for that question, Brandon. I'm just reading through some more questions. Um, here we go. This is a question I was going to ask earlier. Peter wants to know what editing uh, suite or software are you using for your videos? Yeah, I use, um, I, I'm fully fully Apple uh, driven. So um, I use Final Cut Pro, which is a, an Apple only um, <laughs> an Apple only product. Um, and yeah, it, it may be, Maybe doesn't have the bandwidth as the um, as the you know um, Adobe Premiere Pro or, or that top uh, you know the top of the line one does. Um, it probably sits just under Premiere Pro, uh, but you know for, for what I do uh, and yeah, it it does everything everything that I want it to do and some more. I um I could tell you right now I do not know the, the all, every feature to it or or anything like that. Um, yeah, I'm still always learning about it and um, constantly learning. You know. Uh, little shortcuts and stuff to make your editing time quicker. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a great program, and uh, yeah, it, uh, it doesn't crash, which is which is so good for editing. That's for sure. Look, that is probably the bonus over the years yeah. of anything Apple, hasn't it? Like, it, it very rarely crashes. So, um, if at all ever. So, if you are an Apple user, um, yeah, all, all for it. But don't be frightened. Don't you don't have to. Uh, I suppose to go to too much extent you know if you're just starting out and you just want to know some little things and whatnot even the gopro editor through your phone uh it can do it all for you you just put the videos in and it does it i know harry's got some on his ipad some some little stuff so um you know it's really cool in in that sense that uh you don't have to go out and invest a fortune where you, when you're starting off you know you can do it with a phone and a GoPro and, and get out there and, and go to town. And once you build up, you, you know, you get your following and then you, you, you find that you're really liking it. You, you can step into cameras and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, um, that series I did with Buster up at the Cape, that was all done on, on iMovie. So that's, uh, that's the free program that comes with a, a MacBook. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you do not need the, the top of the line product. That's for sure. Um, to get you started. Yeah, for sure. Um, more advice questions. What, Sue wants to know what piece of advice would you give for somebody starting out? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, a bit like before, f film everything. Um, and, yeah, don't be afraid to just keep experimenting with um, the way you film stuff. Um, you know, make just, I, I always, whenever I feel, film anything, um, I just make sure uh, I've got three things that I think about all the time before I hit the record button. You know, is it in frame? Um, is it in focus? And then is my, you know, my lighting or my exposure? The, uh, how I want it and if those three things are right then 
um, I'll hit that red button and start recording. But yeah, don't be afraid to to yeah film everything and yeah film stuff outside. You know what you think your own bandwidth is. That's for sure. Um, yeah, I've delved into a um, a few things that yeah definitely put put me out of my comfort zone filming wise. Um, and yeah, you, you get to kind of see your own skills grow within yourself, which is uh, which is yeah pretty cool to see. Yep, I just got a message from Dave. They the the little device I'll give away another one next week. They have the Apple stuff uh, already plugged yeah. into the side right. as well. So, very good. Yeah, so you get all that. Thanks for the question, Sue. Um, Brandon, another question. Uh, what's your biggest achievement with your media work? Yeah, well, um, that's a good, good question. Mm -hmm. um, anything I do for you know, um, yeah, any any of the people I work for is. Um, is, is always good i guess i guess probably the thing that i we kind of touched on earlier night the people i've been able to to get yeah, a get in front of and be on that boat and then take me places i think you know um yeah go being able to go as you said go all the way up to cape york down to down to where you are at my whaler um work with people you know i do all the all the videos for harry at jackal um so you know to get in front of uh, a person, a person like Harry, who I never thought I, I would would fish with or call a mate, um, yeah, is, is pretty cool. So, um, I guess, I guess that production wise, um, what I did with Langers at the the Oz Open was like probably the the hot like a, like a highlight. Um, we've been wanting to do a like me and him wanted to do a tournament video um, for a long time. You know that boat to boat, uh, you know filming style. Um, it's one thing to, to be on a boat. Uh, we we did actually we did we did a little bit with you and him on a um, a teams comp out at Somerset and a pre fish, um, that, and that's one thing to be on the boat. But to get that that side on action, you know, you look what uh, Kyle and Brandon are doing in the states. With, you know that type of stuff. Um, yeah, we we really followed them hard and um, wanted to, to put out I guess Aussie swing on it. So to do that, um, yeah, with the help of uh, Ken Mills Toyota, who who sponsored us for for that that set of videos, uh, was yeah was probably my you know what do you call your greatest achievement, um, and yeah we'll, we'll be back this year too. So we've got um we got open uh, on the river. Yeah, on the river. So I might I might be putting a post out for someone with a bit faster faster boat so I can keep up with Maddie because I know I know he won't be fishing longer spots and I might be five ten minutes behind him. So if yeah. anyone if anyone wants to be a boat driver, come. Come October, I think I'll be. I'll uh, yeah, I might, might need it. That's for sure. But yeah, we got um, Timmy, Timmy from Rapala on board this year um, to sponsor us for the Open this year. So that's that's very good. And thanks to Timmy for that. So we'll be we'll be down there at Richmond. Um, and yeah, I think it's a good time of year, and we'll be able to put something together pretty cool again. So yeah, watch this space. Oh, it's going to be really cool. And I know you and Langer's are good mates, and you you've been sort of talking about this. She, I, I've been down here for three years now, so it was well before uh, I moved down that you're you're planning it. This is this has been a long process to get it where it is, and uh, you've done awesome. I just um, you know I get the benefit because Maddie's a mate of mine, and and we get to talk all the time. But uh, as a teacher, I, I say it on all of his posts that he does when he posts up anything for his charter and stuff. He's just such a good teacher, yeah. and what you guys did with your video with his stuff last year. With being able to uh, listen to how his mind, I knew that there was no bullshit in that straight up. Yeah, that, like, yeah. that was Langer's. I knew when he was nervous. I knew when he <laughs> wasn't nervous. Yeah. Uh, you know, I could see that, and that was none of that was staged. That was real, real life sort of Langer's. That's how he is. That, that's why I really enjoyed it. Yeah, no, it was um, it was pretty cool to see. Yeah, kind of the the, the emotional roller coaster, I guess, that he, he did go on. Um, yeah that comp and yeah i had the earphones in the whole time so i was listening to, to everything so it was um that was yeah pretty cool to be a part of yeah uh kevin wants to know uh what's the best b-roll footage you've ever taken I, I was probably i was honestly probably most proud or not yeah i guess most proud is probably the word of, of what we took down at um at my whaler that that if, if you talk b-roll you need obviously um you yeah, know a good setting good lighting um, and then just yeah, subjects that are doing their thing and nothing looks staged. So um, the stuff we got down there uh, down there at Mawala with um, kind of that that sun sun coming up, you know silhouettes, boats getting backed into the water, that type of stuff. 
that uh, that was um that was pretty cool and I was I was actually you don't you don't normally get it but I was pleasantly surprised of a few shots that I got um when I when I got home and started looking at the footage um I think it was actually one of Kevin that was probably I think I said it to you there was one of my favorite ones where um there was just a, literally a silhouette, silhouette with all the Mulwala trees and him just giving a thumbs up but just something yeah. like that is just yeah his money <laughs> it's what we call it. We call it money. It was- yeah, that that was definitely one of the best shots for sure. Let's have a look. Um, Neil wants to know if you were out on Wyvernhoe Dam on Sunday. <laughs> yes, yes. The old little little wrapped wrapped boat was um was out out for a for a run. Uh, Somerset wasn't that kind, so we um mate mate I had was uh had a, had a good spot at Wyvernhoe that we went and um yeah. Got a couple of fish before calling it time. Such an underrated fishery too, Wyvern Ho. I mean, we yeah. we as Bass Pros concentrate on the um, the Somerset stuff, and it wasn't sort of till Bass Nation come in and started doing a few comps there. And then, you know, the ABT Electric Series has always had rounds there, but it's sort yeah. of such a such an underrated fishery being so close to Brisbane. People should be fishing a lot more. Definitely, no, it's a great a great fishery. That's for sure. He also wants to know how'd you go. <laughs> um, I didn't go that, that good. My mate could have could have a couple really really good ones. So there's there's some big fish getting around at the moment. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Big catfish as well. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. I, I knew about that. Yeah, uh, Kevin wants. Uh, where, who was it? I don't know. Hang on, my mouse is frozen here. Um, Kevin wants to know where you got your music from for the videos. Where do you get your music from? Yeah, cool. So. Um, yeah, I guess you know, music music's probably you know, a sensitive topic, so to speak. If you're talking to YouTube or Facebook, you um, it, there's a few parameters and stuff that you got to be careful of um, copyright wise. Uh, so uh, there's plenty of different sites that you can you know pay for and stuff. So uh, Musicbed and Artlist are probably the two biggest ones that you can pay a subscription to and just get a, a media full of of their um, of their music. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, and they're, they're, they're what I use. They're, they're top of the line stuff, really, really good quality. Otherwise, uh, you know, on YouTube, there's a heap of no copyright sound, uh, you know, music you can use. And, and I've used uh, before uh, plenty of times. And yeah, I guess music music is easily the hardest thing um, to to find. Um, if you, I guess, before I go go away on a on a shoot or anything, I try and get a list of of music. That I, you know, I think I'm gonna, you know, talk about creating that story before you go, and then you can start thinking of shots to try and, you know, fill in um, whether it's a, a you know, a product, a, a shoot, or it's like a tournament video or stuff like that. You can always um, start to map that out in your head before you go, so you can start filming, uh, filming to that song. That's a shot. Yep. So for people that don't realise or are new to the whole thing, you just can't grab your favourite song, put it to your video, and play it. It just, you know. I've um, I don't know how many times that I, I watch some people's videos and they've got their favourite song on, and you just go, you know, you just once you get, I think it's three copyright strikes, you you're pretty much done, yeah. and they, they can be pure and utter accidents. We've all made the mistake of doing it. I uh, I actually got approval from Warner Brothers for ACD Thunderstruck, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> um, on one of my earlier videos, uh, having a crack at it, and they they copyrighted me, and I sent them a uh, thing saying I'm not monetized, whatnot, and I actually said, yeah, put this link on the bottom, and you can leave it on there, and then it stayed on there for about another, uh, I think, three years, and then yeah. they must have scanned again because they scan automatically for music, yeah. and they picked me up the second time and said, no, nah, you got to change the music. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, even um, even from different people. Like, you know, different, uh, what would you call it, like profiles. Now, we had, we had that thing the other day with the Bluefin one. It wanted to, wanted to say it wasn't legal when it was. So, um, yeah, there's plenty of different uh, yeah, parameters around the music. You just got to be careful. Yeah, for sure. So I, um, I've i given the postcode pros away. As I said, we've still got Harry's Wheel and the team's fishing. But I think I, what I'll do is I might do the... The team's fishing one now, and I'll do Harry's wheel later on at the end of the end of the night. So for the brag mat, the um, team's fishing shirt 
and the um, Teams Fishing Stubby Call that I've borrowed from my Canadian club that I'm still trying to get sponsorship from um, because I drink their product nearly every week, is I'm going to give that to Brandon Scott. Brandon uh, asked that great question earlier on. So, Brandon, if you can send me a message to Corey Zam Fishing Facebook page with your address, I'll get that post pack prized out to you uh, during the week. As I said earlier, Mick Hayden won the postcode prize, so he wins the little battery pack. Mick, send me through a message, and I will, uh, after the show, I will get them all organised just with the address and whatnot. So we've still got Harry's wheel to give away later on. How are you going for um, voice? You need to have a drink or anything? No, no, good, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. I, I have for the last three weeks done it solo, so it's been... Uh, by the end of the night, I've been a bit hoarse because my, yeah, <laughs> the, the computer crashed. I've got the new computer going, um, hoping it all all working really well at the other end. Uh, so I'll keep going through the questions people are asking, so I'll keep bringing them back. Uh, Brett wants to know, what do you pack when you're heading out filming? Do you have a list of essential gear which you take? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I should pan my, my, camera, my camera over here. We've got our little editing um and i guess we got me and uh my partner maddie who i who we did the filming with we've got a, a definite checklist that we go through um there's been too many times and i've forgotten sd cards or a lens or a lens cap nd filters so um if i go if i go on a like a uh a big shoot that i can drive to we've got a really 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 big wheelie safe case that we can put put everything in um, if I, you know, for example, when I came down to Mole Whaler, I had to be a bit more creative, um, especially flying with um, spare batteries, cameras, that type of stuff. Um, everything had to be carry on, so I had to pack light and pack smart. So, yeah, definitely, definitely got a checklist. Um, and de depending on where I go, what I'm doing um, depends on how much, you know, spare stuff I take. Um, uh, like when I went to the Cape, it, with Benny, I literally had to spare everything from camera to lens to filters to SD cards to spare computers, spare hard drives. Um, I just didn't want anything to go wrong, um, especially, you know, the remoteness of Cape York. So, uh, yeah, definitely having a list and, and, and pre-planning. We've got a, you know, a charge box for all our charges, um, you know, obviously your, your safe cases for all your gear and stuff like that. So being pre-planned and, and, you know, having, having a good... A good structure in before you go just yeah um i guess alleviates all that bad performance when you when you get somewhere and then realize you've forgotten something pretty important and, and generally when you have that little gut feeling that you've forgotten something oh, you have, yeah. haven't you oh, what about yeah definitely <laughs> i know that feeling i'll drone, drone in the boat feeling so um, so but yeah, for everyone I'll, I'll, I'll leave i suppose i'll lead you into the story what i'm talking about is when lane come down after the competition, we just wanted to get some boat footage, some B footage of the boats flying up and down the lake. So Lane was in and out of my boat and into Bill's boat and vice versa, and we were we we're doing trying to get this footage anyway to protect the drone. Lane put it in the in the rod locker of Bill's boat. We got back to my place before we put him on the plane to to fly home. He said, oh, "I feel like I've I've lost something," and it ended up that your drone had gone back with Bill to to uh, Lismore. <laughs> The gut feeling ne never leads you astray. Never yeah. Astray. All right. Warren wants to know, um, do you use GoPro, GoPro cameras or do you use a different camera? Yeah. I um, Yeah, so use, use a mixture of both. So um, GoPros are really, really good for those, uh, for just having on 24-7, um, for, for things like hookups and stuff like that. If, you, if you're not shooting your big camera, um, a GoPro footage for three seconds over a hookup, um, you know, when your fish hooking up is, is awesome, especially with the quality they are. So, um, yeah, GoPro Hero 8 is what we run, um, and it's a, it's a great little camera. Um, as for a big camera, we run a Panasonic, Panasonic Lumix GH5, uh, and, it, yeah, we, we had Panasonic lenses before the actual – that body. So uh, they just cut – you know, compatible with all Panasonic Lumix lenses, so uh, that was just an easy swap over. It's a it's a great camera for, I guess, you know, intermediate to yeah, beginner intermediate use. Um, and it's yeah, it definitely no Sony with autofocus and stuff like that. But um, quality wise, yeah, right up there. It's a it's a great camera, and I really enjoy using it. Really easy. That's what I love. 
Yeah, and look, uh, my motto, everyone that's watched the show before, my motto straight up is, you know, buy the best you can afford. Yeah. Don't go out and outlay, you know, $3,000 for a camera that you might only use two or three times. Yeah. You know, go out and borrow borrow somebody's rent one. Yeah. Do whatever you can to, to see if you like it first. Yeah, go and grab a GoPro. But these bloody things here, <laughs> you really know, know, realistically, for if you're just doing Facebook and Instagram posts and whatnot, just yeah. getting started, you can get all the content out of a freaking smartphone these days that you, yeah. you know, don't rule them out and don't, you know... If you want to go and buy a good camera, you can do more stuff with it for sure. But yeah, in, in the meantime, one of these you can shoot so, a whole video on one of these. So good, yeah. No, the the, the way they they work these days, it's um yeah, fantastic. They they film it 4K 60, uh, 1080, 120. So um, they they they've got great capa uh, yeah capacity. Yep, for sure. Grant wants to know, um, have you been looking into the drones that are coming out of the states that actually travel underwater as well as fly in the air? I haven't yeah. seen this. Yeah, I want. I want them for for to look at fishing spots. <laughs> That's yeah. what I'll be using them for. Um, yeah. yeah, no, they're they're a cool bit of kit, um, and they are getting more and more popular in in Australia. Um, there, there's a few actually a, a few red emperor fishermen are using. Um, I think Greg Lapray, he's using it um, around here at Morton Morton Bay and using it yeah to good success. So um, no, they're they're gaining uh, very much a, a cult following almost. All right, just looking for some more questions. There's plenty there. Um, this is a, this is a good one. I want to talk about this one for sure, uh, and then I'll, I'll cross over to you. Are you mindful or worried about people working out where you're fishing now, Warren? That's a that's an awesome question. I did um, read a post down here on a local Facebook page uh, just recently where a young fella got on there. He posted up a heap of photos, uh, Cliffy it was, and uh, put a big write-up of how he was catching and whatnot. And it was awesome to see. But Rex Hunt got on and wrote him a big note and congratulating him on giving, giving the information up and, and whatnot. Matty Langers and I talk about it all the time. Warren, you can have a camera on the boat. People can know where you're fishing, but it still doesn't mean they're going to catch fish. It is like live sight. It is like anything else. You still have to catch them. You've got to be doing the right thing with the right technique at the right time. You could turn up to one of my spots at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and not catch a fish because I was catching them at 10 o'clock, you know, the day before. So um, I'm not worried about anyone saying I don't have secret X spots anywhere uh, my camera's always on, and if I catch a good fish and it's worth putting on camera, I will put it on camera for sure because just because you're in that spot or you think it's right, I see all these photos. I have put it up on my Facebook before where they try and cover the background out or just take a photo of the fish in the bottom of the boat. I mean, nah, it, there's no need for it. What are your thoughts on that, Wayne? Yeah, no, spot, spot on, spot on. I, yeah, if, if you can give away everything down to the, the, the barometer pressure and stuff like that, but someone's still got to go out and replicate it. Um, and, yeah, fish, fish are, are, are you know, natural creatures, so they're not going to go to, um, yeah, exactly the same uh, any in each two days. I guess from my point of view too is, you know, a lot of the time I'm filming for clients as well, so um, I'm there to do a, to do a job um, and, yeah, you know, a lot of the time getting paid for it. So, um, yeah, I'm just there to film film the best, the best sequence and the best product for, for your client. Yeah, mate, don't, uh, don't get caught out on this whole uh, theory. It is such a, a bad place in social media that just because you put a photo up that people are going to go there and, and just, you know, catch the fish. They've still got to be doing the right thing at the right time for sure. Exactly right. Uh, just a quick one. Bill's just giving you the plug there. He just asking you to, uh, we did talk about it earlier. You might have missed the start of the show, but Bill did say, um, you know, where can people get a hold of you? Uh, that's Mad Lane Media on Insta. Facebook Lane Furling on Facebook. You've got a you got a YouTube channel there. Um, you know, know, it's yeah. <laughs> Facebook and Instagram is probably the best. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm on there a fair bit. So um, yeah, you can tailor plenty of different packages for, for different people. All right, Paul wants to know what are the what are the easiest things to film to add that cinema uh, cinematic sort of to your video. I love the stuff that you did at Mo Whaler, as you said, the silhouette of Kev 
doing the thumbs up, yeah. the, the reeds blowing, the wind coming across, but a couple of the sun ones where you use the tree yeah. uh, and yeah. you come out of the tree into the sun. Um, yeah. Give Paul some tips for his videos. Yeah, I, I think the one you nailed there, Paul, bird, bird shots is what every videographer tries to get. as a really good slow-mo bird shot, um, but then they're, they're so hard to get. Uh, so if, if you can nail one of them, you're done. You're, you're already 10 steps ahead, but... I guess um, you, using using your your location in the time of day to your um, to your you know your strength and your ability is a, is the one tip I can probably give. Um, I try and you, all your B roll or your best B roll can normally comes in the in the early hours of the or the morning, you know, sunrise um, or sunset, so to speak. So you know, sit, you, use your silhouettes to your to your advantage and also your framing. So um, I'll shoot a lot of. You know, three three different frames on the same the same shot. So you shoot a real real close up shot. So kind of like what I am am here. You know, just head, head chest or um, if it's a you know fishing just just the hand and the reel. Um, you do a medium medium angle shot. So um, if someone's fishing, it'll be the the hand and the rod. Um, maybe the rod tip in the water. You can see if they're throwing a crankbait, the rod tip um, you know bouncing away, and then a wide shot as well. Um, and and you know having those three different shots, you can. Uh, yeah, you can find different cinematic views, um, and then yeah, like cap, like what you said, using your silhouettes and your your sun um, to your advantage too. Um, and yeah, everyone will joke about it, but also a bit of lens flare um, is, is always good. So you'll get the um, you have something you know in a, in a shadow, but the sun coming around the corner and, and making those little flare spots on the on the screen it, um, adds a good bit of cinematic value to it. Um, yeah, but biggest biggest thing is playing around. I, I look back on some. Uh, some of my stuff um, I've done oh, two two years ago, twelve months ago, and I you know you, you hit, hit your head against the wall. <laughs> what was I doing? What was I thinking? But you just continue continually growing, continually progressive, progressing, and um, yeah, I'm by no means a, a goddamn expert. I just just enjoy doing it. But um, yeah, you, you do you do just find find your eye and find what looks good, and um, and can just kind of pick that out and just just shoot it in five seconds because that's. That's all you need is just those little small clips, um, and yeah, they go a long way to creating a good mood and atmosphere, atmos in the in the video. Yep, uh, just a quick one to go back on what we covered earlier on, uh, Mick. Um, I use Filmora um, for my editing through Windows. You use Final Cut. Final Cut. Final Cut. So that's through the Apple stuff. Um, but find something. I, I like the Filmora uh, because it's really easy uh in the sense that there's a lot of preloaded stuff especially your your um your slide changes and all that sort of stuff is all sort of you know a lot easier it's click and play so uh that's why i like that just going through apparently i was sending out naughty pictures to mary barker last night so may, maybe i got hacked last night or just got <laughs> got a bit drunk so um <laughs> i'll find out what's going on there mary i, I don't know what's going on I, unless i was asleep um Thomas Pinter, who does some awesome videos down here. I don't know if you're watching any of Thomas's stuff. He wants to know, are you running, this is a very technical question that I, I wouldn't even know what it means, 60 frames and 120 uh, frames per second on NTSC yeah. or you're running it on PAL? Yeah, PAL. So, yeah, just just capacity of my camera and just what, what I what I film, um, yeah, 50 PAL um, is, is, is suffice for, for, yeah, what I do. But yeah, as I said, yeah, cam camera camera limitations and stuff is uh is uh yeah kind of what you're driven by a, a fair 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 while of the time. Yep, for sure. Brad's obviously on watch tonight. He wants to know um, if you're doing any more comedy because <laughs> we, we got we we have got some more videos, some smaller sponsor videos that we will be releasing over a period of time, and I can tell you that there will be no. Uh, Emmys, Oscars, or what? One from the Bluefin Fishing Team. Mate, I didn't. Yeah, I, I just enjoy. I, I the, the blueprint was laid out. All I had to do was go film it. I didn't think of any of that. That was uh, <laughs> it came, no, it came, came up well. So um, no, that, was, that was good fun to shoot. Kind of something, something a bit different. So that was, yeah. yeah, that was you'll, cool. You'll see them over the next couple of weeks. We've got some funnies to release as well. Um, Shannon wants to know: Do you use any night vision stuff? No, no, I don't. Um, yeah, maybe just don't have the don't have the dollars for it, <laughs> so to speak. But um, no, there's there's um, yeah, some cool stuff you can get with with night vision. I guess um, yeah, it's just kind of what, what we 
don't don't do. Um, but yeah, not to say that it's uh, yeah something I definitely won't look at in the future. Um, yeah, this industry is growing in any which direction, so uh, definitely don't rule anything out. No, that's it for sure. Hey, mate, would you believe we're almost at an hour? Yeah, that went quick. <laughs> that went really quick. When I say to the guests, when I get them on, I say we're we're going to try and keep it to an hour. They'll think, oh, an hour is going to be a long, long time. Just flows through when you're just sitting here, like it's just talking to each other. We better get Harry on. I know it's school holiday, so he doesn't have to go to bed early, but I better get Harry on. I'll give you a chance to go and have a leak. We'll come back and, and get any uh, questions later on. Uh, just to finish off, we you sure. know we don't like to keep anyone for for longer than an hour. Um, so I'm just going back through the questions and see if we can find somebody. Is any of those questions sort of stick out for you earlier on in the night uh, for Harry's wheel, mate? Um, let's have a look. Because we've given Brandon and uh, Brandon Scott won the team's fishing pack. Yeah. And we've got Mick Hayden's won the postcode prize. Yeah. Um, Lloyd said that your hair is quite good, but I'm not going to give you that. <laughs> yeah, bad. Yeah, bad. Hey, Paul, Paul, Paul's had some great questions tonight. Yep, Paul Angley. So what we normally do here, Paul, is you have to write in the comments and ask Harry to uh, spin the wheel, and whatever he spins, you win. So you've got uh, two minutes to write a question in there uh, for us while we're waiting for that. Langers has got on. He's asked, what's the best boat snacks? <laughs> boat snacks. Oh, yeah. Um, you need good boat snacks if you're filming all day. Um, shapes. Shapes are the way to go. Snack shapes, yeah. yeah. Chicken, chicken crimpies. Uh, Harry, Harry's got me stuck on the chicken crimpies no at the moment. Veg yeah, Vegemite too. They'll change your life. Just yeah. Slightly. Really? Uh, if anyone, also, if you're into chips, uh, like potato chips type style thing, um, Aldi have released now, they've done their second run of the Worcester sauce chips. Stop it. And they are insanely the best potato crisp chip that I've ever eaten, like, from <laughs> for years. There we go. Paul's on. So I'll give you a rest. I'll put you into the green room. I'll yep. change cameras over to Harry. We'll have a quick chat to him. He'll spin the wheel and we'll come back and we'll finish off with any questions anyone's got. Sweet. All right, let's get the boy up. Hello. G'day, Harry. How are you going? Good. Good, good. Hey, we've got uh, we've got everything working. You're back on. You've had a two-week rest uh, from the wheel, mate. Uh, Paul Langley's uh, on there, and he has commented to spin the wheel, but you've yeah. got a little message before you spin the wheel, don't you? Yes, um, Dave Lawson asked me to spin this, um, um, spin this 50 cent coin, and if it lands on heads, I spin the wheel to the left, and if it lands on tails, I spin it to the right. All right, so that was Dave Lawson. We went away last week. We stayed at his house, and he's given me the challenge, and he said, you wouldn't remember you have your 50 cent coin. Give it a flip, mate. It is heads. So heads. So which way are you spinning it? Left. Left. All right. Let's go. Let's see what Mick wins. Sorry, we're at Mick. Uh, um, Paul. Paul Langley. Mick's already won a prize. That was a pretty big spin there, Harry. Yeah, it has to be special. This is a 50 cents. All right. What do we got? We got God Eight Fishing Lures. God Eight Fishing Lures. What was the God Eight Fishing Lures prize? God Eight Fishing Lures was the soft plastic. No, no, we've given them all away, I think, mate. That's no, it again. No, no, we've got. Oh, is there a couple of packets of God Eight still there? No, I don't think there is. Oh, well, it'll be the gift voucher then, mate. Okay, gift vouchers in again. There we go. So how much is that gift voucher worth again? I can't remember. Oh, $25. $25 gift voucher. So that's BCF or super cheap. So Paul Langley was the winner of that. That's a $25 voucher. Paul, make sure you send me through um, your address so I can post that out. Harry, thanks very much. Good to have you back on the wheel, mate. You like my harmonica Iranian skills? Harmonica uh, Iranian skills. Well, there you go. You go back inside and I will talk to you after the show, mate. Okay, bye. Bye. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. All right, there it is. Bring Lane back on.
I have to apologise. I did say the wrong name there because I was reading the wrong thing. So Brandon Scott was the team's Fishing Australia winner. Um, Mick Hayden actually won the uh, Dave Lawson supplied um, battery pack and Paul Langley won Harry's Wheel, which is a $25 voucher. There you go, and he's already on there. Thanks for the spin. So let's just see if there's any final sort of questions come through. What normally happens, mate, is as soon as the prizes are all given away, everyone takes off. <laughs> So we try and uh, Ken's got a quick one. Hey, we'll finish. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll go through and see if I've missed any. What's the funniest thing you've caught on camera? Funniest thing. Um, and don't we, say me trying to, yeah. uh, trying to yeah. drink syrup. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, I'll tell the broth was the best. Yeah. I, um, I caught some, I guess, just when you, you're filming for, for a long, long period of time when Buster and Robbo up at, uh, up at Cape, we caught some pretty funny things. Uh, rods breaking. Maybe, maybe not funny, but like you know, shark, bull sharks hitting the boat, stuff like that. Yeah, that was that was pretty epic, and um, yeah, some pretty funny, funny captures. That's sure. Probably, probably Buster, the blow ups of Buster when he gets bogged and stuff. That that was that was probably my highlight. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, Langers was on there earlier. He might might have gone to bed. He does like to go to bed. He needs yeah. his beauty sleep. But um, <laughs> you know, you were lucky enough. You had the microphone on him for the whole of. Um, the what was it? Yeah, uh, yeah. I was open last yeah. year at Kenya, yeah. so you had him wired up on the microphones. You had your earphones in. You could hear everything that was going yeah. through his, yeah. in his head and and whatnot. Yeah. You know, it's not a two way communication. You couldn't no. talk to him, but no. you could hear everything that was going. Any any sort of dummy spits from Langers hidden oh, behind yeah. the scenes there. Oh yeah, plenty and plenty that you just don't. You just not um don't have the record button on for. Um, yeah. Probably, yeah, he, he had that that second morning, and he he went like he went like one from eight. Had just kept kept dropping fish, and I, I honestly I dead set put the camera away, like just put it down for a bit, like just not not on him because it, it was um, I probably shouldn't have because it, it it was some good good um good good footage, but yeah, there was uh, there was some dummy spits in there that's for sure. <laughs> it um yeah it brings out the best of everyone, but um, yeah, no, he's a professional, so oh, he's the older professional. He, he he is on there. He has told us he's on there, and he said he's always poised, basically. We're poised. <laughs> I guess you could say that. Yeah. Um, Peter wants to know, um, have you ever fallen in while trying to get the best shot? Take that shot. I haven't, but my, my drone has. <laughs> it's sitting about 30 k's offshore of Morton Island, if anyone wants to go get it. <laughs> but, but I, don't, I, don't think I'll be, I don't think I'll be too far away from going in the drink. Something always, something always eventually happens, so... Um, just, just a good story. That's what that is. Just a good story. <laughs> Always, yeah, that's what you want. You want the story to go with it. I'm just trying to get my mouse to work again. As I said, it's playing up tonight. That's all good. I'll just go see the. If there's no more questions, everyone's starting to drop off. As I said, as soon as we uh, give away all the prizes, everyone goes. I'd like to thank you for coming on tonight, mate. Uh, it's it's always a pleasure talking to you. I love talking to you. Um, you know, it's a. It's always good to catch up with mates, but if I can do it on the show and other people can um, benefit from it, I think there was lots of people on there. I was happy with the questions that come through. People did ask genuine questions about uh, signing up. I have got one last question before we go. Yeah. The big fish photo, the the stupid <laughs> holding your arms out a million miles an hour yeah. in front. Just yeah. explain to people how bad that really does look. Yeah. I, yeah it... Um... Yeah, when 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 it, when it's taken when, when a photo's taken bad, it yeah it sticks out like anything. Um, yeah, if, if if I can give any bit of advice, it's yeah just get get the sun right on the fish and um and yeah don't put it in in bad proportions too because it sticks out clear as day when the, the fish is huge and your head's small. So, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. And this one's for Langers. Turn turn your phone yeah, yeah, landscape yeah. when you're taking your photos and videos. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Don't want to get stuck in portrait mode, that's for sure. That's it. <laughs> don't don't forget the Alacraft Brand Ambassadors uh, Apprenticeship uh, Pay and Sorry Group. If you want to check out the rules, you've got to actually be added to the group. It's a safe environment for everyone to get in there. If you've got any kids or any friends that are in that age bracket, I suggest they give it a crack. It is so cool. If I was if I was of that age, you know, getting a boat to use and being an ambassador and and all the other discounts that go with it, all of our other sponsors that are on board, you get all the discounts through them as well. So whoever wins that, 
will uh, will be able to get their fishing career off to a great start. It's a great little boat, um, you know, and you can work your way up through the ranks. It's uh, it's an awesome sort of program, mate. Anything you want to give a share? Anyone you want to give a quick shout out to? No, no, I just um, just yeah echo what you said about that that uh, the brand ambassadorship i obviously got to see firsthand the bluefin fishing team and what you guys are doing and it's um yeah no it's, it's very impressive and um yeah I encourage everyone to get on board um yeah as for myself no got um got plenty of good people behind the scenes that that helped me out um you know partner maddie always du- doubles triples you know, four times looks over my work before before i give it to a client so um no good 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 teamwork i think um, goes a long way, but yeah, no, um, no, thanks for having me, mate. I, I had a ball tonight. No, nah, awesome. You stay on the air. I'm going to cut the feed off, and if it cuts out, just log back in, and we'll have a we'll have a chat off air. But uh, thanks everyone for being on again tonight. Um, great show. We will be back again Monday night next week, hopefully with some photos of the Central Victorian lure casters at Nagambi. So looking forward to that. All right, get me mouse to work. We're out for now. See you later, <laughs> mate. There you go.